In May 1979, at Veteran Stadium, Philadelphia Eagles owner Lenny Toes announced a lengthy extension of Coach Dick Vermeil's contract. In the previous season, Vermeil had produced a winning team, prompting a heartfelt endorsement from Toes. As long as I'm with the Eagles, and as long as Dick wants to stay with us, he'll be here, and I hope that's a hell of a long time. In 1978, Philadelphia had reached the playoffs. Could they do it again in 79? The Eagles met the challenge by posting the best record in the conference, a feat that made a city proud. Autumn 1979. The Eagles and their fans celebrate six wins in the first seven weeks. The fastest start in pro football. The offense soared, defensive coach Marion Campbell's 3-4 alignment swamped the opposition with a relentless wave of tactics. The Saints, Giants, Cardinals, Redskins, and Steelers all fell to the mean green machine. The Eagles were pushovers no longer. Indeed, they ranked among the best in professional football. There were many reasons for the Eagles' quick getaway. One was the maturing of young players like number 68, Dennis Harrison. Second-year linebacker Reggie Wilkes, number 51, became a fixture on the outside. Free safety Bernard Wilson, number 22, made the all-rookie squad while leading the team in interceptions. He was joined in Coach Fred Bruni's secondary by number 46, Herman Edwards, who made his usual share of big plays. Rounding out the unit was cornerback Bobby Howard and safety Randy Logan, number 41 who earned his first trip to the Pro Bowl. Joining Logan on the All-Star squad was nose tackle Charlie Johnson, number 65. Then there was number 78, Carl Hairston, who teamed with new arrival number 87, Claude Humphrey, for 25 quarterback sacks. The Eagles also possessed veteran strength on an offensive line coached by Jerry Wampfler. Center Guy Morris anchored the group, flanked by experienced guards Woody Peoples in his 11th pro season and Wade Key in his 10th. Both Eagle tackles went to the Pro Bowl, Jerry Sizemore and perennial participant Stan Walton. With aid from rookie Pete Perot, the line helped quarterback Ron Jaworski to his finest year. Jaworski ranked third in conference passing, but more important was his emergence as a poised professional. Jaworski, once a kid with a quick draw, was now a man with deliberate aim. He threw only as hard as was necessary to get the job done. By doing this, while drastically cutting down offensive turnovers, he became the complete NFL quarterback. In 1979, Ryan Jaworski was the leader on offense, but the team's acknowledged leader on defense, linebacker Bill Berge, was sidelined by a knee injury early in the season. For the first time in his career, Berge would have to watch while others took his place. In 11 years of pro football, this is my first injury, and I hate to say I was overdue for uh, 
an injury. I don't like to look at it like that, but uh, I've been very fortunate. The knee is finished now. The operation was a success. Now I've got to build up all of these muscles here that connect here and back up here. Disappointing, yes, but uh, I, I've got a great attitude about it. I'm willing to put in the hours, and I've got good people that I'm working with. I'm just going to give it my very best shot, and that's all you can do. It would be a tough road back, but Bergie would gather inspiration from fellow linebacker John Bunting, who himself had recovered from a serious knee injury the year before. My goal was to get back in the Eagles uniform and, and run out in that field again. And uh, if you continue, you work hard uh, to try to achieve something, and if you have a, a, a goal that's very high, and mine was, mine was to get back out there, and a lot of people didn't think I would. But uh, it all turned out for the best, and I'm, I think that uh, I'm the happiest eagle around right now. With Bergie gone, Bunning and Frank Lamaster number 55 assumed leadership responsibilities. While linebacker coach George Hill groomed youngsters Terry Tortolo, Ray Phillips, and Jerry Robinson number 56. But the most interesting new face was a foot. Kicker Tony Franklin brought a new look to the NFL along with a powerful leg that was responsible for 105 points, second highest in the conference. Franklin and another rookie, punter Max Runniger, completely revitalized Philadelphia's kicking game. While special teamers, Slater, Barnes, Chesley, Spagnola, Burnham, Fitzke, and Louis Jamona made the Eagle kick coverage the very best in pro football. Coach Iman and Stiles' special teams could also go on the offensive. John Shira led the conference in punt returns, and number 89, Wally Henry, went to the Pro Bowl. The special teams were a major reason for Eagles' success, and its members took pride in their contributions. Now, Max and I feel like we're a very strong, intricate part of this team, and uh, we're out there busting our hearts to do the best that we can because we're not playing for us, we're playing for the guys on the team, the guys like Wade Key and Stan Walters and all the old pros that have been here and been with this franchise when they were 2-11-1 or something like that. And it's good to see them win and we're doing our best and I think they know that we're trying to do our best. The Eagles would have to be at their best in week five. Their opponent, the world champion Steelers. The offensive star of the game was tight end Keith Kreffler, who shredded the steel curtain with one clutch catch after another. Kreffler did his part, while the Eagle defense also turned in some big plays. The Steelers came here with 12 straight wins. 12 straight. The Eagles trying to stop their streak right here. Eagles almost jump off sides, get back. Bradshaw wants to throw. Intercepted by Bunning at the 20. Bunning at the 15. Bunning at the 10. Bunning at the 5. Down at the 2. Here was he spins. Gives off to Harris. Tries to sweep inside. He has it. The Eagles have beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Eagles have beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Eagles had triumphed over a championship caliber team. In doing so, they had become one themselves. Team slumps are one of the great mysteries in sport. No one really knows why a good club suddenly becomes ordinary. But it happens to even the best and it hit the Eagles at the midway point of 1979. Philadelphia lost three straight games, but then staged a remarkable comeback. The first step in the Eagles' resurgence came in a Monday night thriller that saw Philadelphia defeat their old rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. The next game, a win over the Cardinals, was sparked by Keith Prefley's fourth quarter touchdown reception. 
The Eagles then made it three in a row with a goal line stand that preserved victory in Green Bay. Then, win number four. Philadelphia climaxed their late season surge with a dismantling of the Detroit Lions. Campbell for too deep. Campbell takes it at the 8. Campbell to the 10. 15. Cuts away at the 20. Runs back away at the 25. Campbell loses at the 35 40. Midfield. 45 40. 35 30. 25 20. 15 10. Down. Touchdown. Billy Campbell. Billy Campbell goes to the coast. The Eagles have reached the playoffs for the second straight year as they beat the Detroit Lions 44 to 7. Bring on the Cowboys. Dallas came to Philadelphia and parlayed some fortunate bounces into a 24-17 victory, ending both the win streak and Eagle hopes for a division championship. The Eagles were disappointed, but roared back in the season's final game to beat the Oilers. In a contest that had no real bearing on the playoff picture, the pride of Eagle football showed through. I am extremely proud of these guys coming down here today, playing what I've seen other playoff teams say, uh, a nothing football game against a damn good football team and win. And I tell you, the only thing that appeals to me right now is a cold beer on the way home and the excitement uh, that's going to be in our city getting ready to play the Chicago Bears with Walter Payton. In the playoffs against the Bears, the Philadelphia defense made many important plays, but none was more critical than Bobby Howard's third quarter interception that halted a Chicago drive. The Eagles still trailed 17-10. It was time to go to work. Come on, man, two down, two down, man, go to them. Third down and eight. Jaworski is back. Fires the camp field. Completed for 40. 45. Midfield. 45. 40. 45. 30. 45. Down. It goes to the camp field for the touchdown. Touchdown. The Eagles won 27-17, a triumph celebrated from main line to many up. Now this game ball, guys, uh, I'm going to give this to the city of Philadelphia. Now I don't know where they're going to put it, but the city of Philadelphia uh, has been very good to Philadelphia Eagles. We will have this painted up and presented and they can put it somewhere in City Hall in a place on it because I'll tell you, a 45-man squad worked for six months to earn this football. and. and I think it should go to the people that have been supporting us uh, so loyally for a number, a number of years. And they're outstanding fans and outstanding people. But the sweet taste of victory turned sour the following week. Favored Philadelphia fell to the young Tampa Bay Buccaneers 24-17. Suddenly, shockingly, the season was over. The 1979 season had its share of happiness and heartbreak. But through it all, one thing remained constant, a willingness to toil long and hard to achieve success. It meant long hours for veteran and newcomer alike in the team weight room a task that has made football in Philadelphia a year-long occupation. Pro football demands both a sound body and sharp mind. While physical condition is fine-tuned in the weight program, strategy and mental toughness are taught by such assistant coaches as Clawson, Joe, Gilman, and Curry. All these ingredients add up to what the Eagles have become 
a team of talented players and coaches who appreciate the special qualities that make Eagle football. The Eagles hold a special place in my heart uh, in that uh, before I came here, I thought I was at the end of my career. And uh, I got a chance to play with the Eagles. And it's just like being reborn again. You don't win in this league unless you have some good football players. And we have players that weren't supposed to be as good as they are, but they're good football players. The Carl Harrisons, the Frank Lamasters, the John Bunnings, the, the Stan Walters, uh, all our players, the Sizemores, the Crefleys, and the Jaworskis, and of course the Wilbert Montgomerys and the Carmichael. These guys are good football players, and football players win games, coaches don't. In 1979, running back Wilbert Montgomery was the NFL leader in all-purpose yardage. He set a new club rushing record, scored 14 touchdowns, and earned a second straight Pro Bowl berth. Montgomery's natural running ability has never been questioned, but some observers wondered if he could catch the ball consistently. In 1979, Montgomery ended all doubt with 41 receptions, five of them for touchdowns. years ago, Wilbert Montgomery was an obscure six-round draft choice from Abilene, Texas. Today, he's on the threshold of NFL superstardom. Wide receiver Harold Carmichael has already achieved superstar stature. After nine seasons in pro football, he is better than ever an athlete whose skills can be appreciated with the same admiration reserved for fine works of art. Carmichael was all pro again in 1979 as he led the team in receptions and receiving yardage. His 11 regular season touchdowns, plus three others in the playoffs, gave him more scoring catches than anyone else in football. But all these accomplishments were secondary to an incredible pro football milestone. Against Cleveland, Carmichael caught a pass in his 106th consecutive game, a new NFL record. By year's end, the string would be 112 and counting. All of Philadelphia cheered Carmichael as he was presented with several mementos, including 106 long-stemmed roses. It should have been the greatest moment in Carmichael's life. But when the Browns rallied in the final moments to beat the Eagles, the loss, not the record, was on the mind of Harold Carmichael. I wish you would have won. You know, it would have made it better. You know, I would have really enjoyed it. Uh, that's, you know, I, everything else went so beautiful today, and uh, I thought we was going to pull this one out, and uh, you know, it just didn't. And it's just, you know, I'm really, you know, as I said before, I'm really happy about the record, but I just, you know, I think I'd, I'd feel much better if we would have won the game. Winning is what matters, not individual records. This is the basic precept on which this team was built. No single game would better illustrate the strength or the pride of Eagle football than the Monday night matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Philadelphia had not won in Dallas in 14 years, and at the game's outset, that streak did not appear to be in jeopardy. 
But then the Eagles tried a daring gamble, and it completely turned the game around. Fourth down on a yard for the Eagles. Everybody in tight. As Jaworski spins and goes with play action. He's looking for Carmichael, who takes it at the five. He's in for a touchdown. The surprising fourth down call rejuvenated the entire team. The Philadelphia defense was first to respond. Then, suddenly, a setback. Ron Jaworski went down, and Eagle momentum was in danger. But Philadelphia's reserve strength came through. John Walton stepped in at quarterback and hit Charlie Smith for a touchdown. Then it was the special team's time to contribute. They smothered the Dallas kick returners and blocked furiously for their own John Shire. Just before the half, the Cowboy fans witnessed some NFL history by native Texan Tony Franklin. Tony hits it. It is going. It is going. It is going. It is good. It is good. That is a new Eagles record a 59 yard field goal by Tony Franklin. Now the Eagle offense began to pour it on. Jaworski back. Floats a pass for Carmichael. Touchdown, Eagles. Jaworski spins. Gives off to Montgomery. First down to the 30. 25 20. 15 10. Touchdown, Robert Montgomery. And that's going to lock it up. Philadelphia's 31-21 triumph over Dallas before a nationwide audience featured everything that made the Eagles a great football team. 1979, a season of lasting achievement, a season of hope, a season when 45 men all shared in the pride of Eagle football.